Why I took up Zen and set out to learn the art of archery needs some explanation. Even as a student, I had been preoccupied with mysticism despite the mood of the times, which had little use for such interests. But despite all my exertions, I became increasingly aware that I could only approach these esoteric writings from the outside, and though I knew how to circle around what one might call the primordial mystic phenomenon, I was unable to leap over the barrier which surrounded the mystery like a high wall. Nor could I find exactly what I sought in the extensive literature on mysticism. So disappointed and discouraged, I gradually came to realize that only the truly detached person can understand what is meant by detachment, that only the contemplative person, who is completely empty and rid of the self, is ready to become one with the transcendent deity. I realized that there is and can be no other way to mysticism than the way of personal experience and suffering. And if this premise is lacking, all talk about it is so much empty chatter. But how does one become a mystic? How does one attain the state of real and not just imaginary detachment? Is there still a way to it, even for those who are separated from the great masters by the abyss of the centuries? Nowhere did I find satisfactory answers to my questions. In the meantime, I had become a lecturer at a university. One day I was asked whether I would like to teach philosophy at the University of Tokyo. I welcomed this opportunity with joy. Here was a chance to get to know the country and people of Japan with the prospect of my making contact with Buddhism and hence with an introspective practice of mysticism. For I had already heard that there were three things in Japan I wanted to experience. One, a carefully guarded and living tradition.